Hello and welcome to another lesson all about shapes. Do you remember in the previous lesson we made a square using reflections of a right angled isosceles triangle? We use this to investigate the properties of the square. Well in this lesson we're going to take a closer look at a special quadrilateral. Again we'll be using what we know about triangles to learn all about this different four-sided polygon. By the end of this lesson you should be able to create a rhombus. Describe the properties of a rhombus. Last time we used a right angle isosceles triangle to create the square. So this time let's choose a scalene triangle. Do you remember what scalene means? See if you can identify the scalene triangle. Remember that a scalene triangle is a triangle in which all the sides are of different lengths and therefore all the angles are of different sizes. So, diagram 3 is a scalene triangle here. We can see by the markings that the sides are of different lengths. For this activity, we're going to be using right angled scalene triangles. Now, we gave Haley and Wesley a set of triangles like these to see what shapes they can come up with. Let's have a look. So, here's how I made my shape. I reflected this from the short side and got this, this triangle. Then I reflected it over this side and got a quadrilateral. And now I've made a quadrilateral, I just can't remember what kind it is. I saw you doing that, so I decided to see if I could get a different shape from you. I reflected my triangle over this side here. Then I took the new shape and reflected it over the other side. Let's work out what the shape is. It must have equal sides because it comes from the original triangle. But there's no way that this is a square. Do you know what shape the learners made? Well, before I tell you, let's see if we can make the same shape. First, I reflect the triangle along this line here. Then, I reflect the triangle along this line over here. Now let's have a look at this on the board. Let's put our markings on our original right angle scalene triangle. We know that the sides are all of different lengths, so let's mark that using different markings. We know that the angle at R is a 90 degree angle because we've been working with a right angled scalene triangle. P is one sized angle and Q is another. I reflect triangle PQR using the mirror line QR. Now I'm going to call the reflected point of P on this side S. Now how do we make a quadrilateral of the same sort from this shape here? This time I reflect the big triangle PQS over the mirror line PRS. I'm going to start by labeling the reflected point of Q as point T. Then I will fill in the markings from our original scalene triangle. This was a 90 degree angle. This we marked with a dot and the angle at P here we marked with a tick. Now let's fill in the congruence marking for all the sides and angles of the other triangles. We know the triangle PQR was reflected here which means PQ is equal to QS and this was reflected here so QS is equal to this line and the same is true here. We also know that PR is equal to RS and QR is equal to RT. But because we're using a right angle scalene triangle, the diagonals are not equal to each other. So PS cannot be equal to QT. What else? Of course, we need to look at the angles. Now we've made this shape from four congruent triangles. So when we reflected the triangle, this means that this angle at Q was equal to this angle and this angle at P was equal to this angle at S. Then we reflected the triangle, which means that these two angles are equal to these two angles. And this angle at P is equal to this angle and this angle at S is equal to this angle. 
Now, the angles at R are all 90 degrees. Now that we've filled in all the equal sides and angles, we need to name the shape. Do you know what type of quadrilateral QBTS is? This shape is called a rhombus. Take a good look at the diagram and all the information we have. I'm going to show you the same diagram without any of the markings so that you can fill in the properties of the rhombus yourself. Quickly draw this diagram. Now fill in all the properties that you can think of from what we've done so far. Firstly, focus on the length of the sides. Then, look at the size of the angles. What did you notice about the diagonals? Right, now let's check if you got the same answers as me. Did you get that all four sides are equal to each other? Did you get that these two angles here are equal to these two angles here? Did you also get that this angle at P is equal to this angle at P and this angle at S is equal to this angle at S? Did you also get that this angle here is 90 degrees and so are all the other angles here at R? What conclusions can you make about the angles in a rhombus? The opposite angles of a rhombus must be equal to each other. Now, be careful. The opposite angles are equal to each other. But is angle Q equal to angle S? This angle is definitely not equal to this angle. That's right. Now, have a look at the diagonals of the rhombus. The diagonals are QRT and PRS. And they intersect at point R. Now, let's look at the line segments that form diagonal QRT. We know that QR is equal in length to RT. We can say that diagonal QRT has been bisected or cut in half. The same is true for diagonal PRS. We know that PR is equal in length to RS. So we can say that diagonal PRS has been bisected or cut in half. That means that even though the diagonals bisect one another, the diagonals are not equal in length to one another. Now, look at the angles at R. What do you notice? We can say that the angles are all 90 degrees. The diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other perpendicular because they are at 90 degrees and bisectors because they cut each other in half. What else do we know about the diagonals? The diagonals also bisect the opposite angles. In other words, diagonal PS bisects the angle at P and bisects the angle at S. Diagonal QT bisects the angle at Q and bisects the angle at T. Wow! We have found out lots of things about the rhombus. For any geometric shape, you must be able to show its properties on the diagram. You will also need to be able to describe its properties in words. Now let's go over to our learners. I have given them each a rhombus to work with and asked them to investigate the lines of symmetry. Can you predict how many lines of symmetry you expect a rhombus to have? Let's see if Haley and Wesley can work it out for us. How can we fold this shape so that two parts fit exactly onto each other? Let's see if this diagonal is a line of symmetry or mirror line. Well, the parts fit exactly onto each other, so yes, diagonal is a line of symmetry. What about this diagonal? Yes, this works. What other possibilities are there? I've tried lots of lines and um, none of them work. So, for a rhombus, there are only two lines of symmetry. Yes, they are absolutely correct. There are two fold lines. One and two. So, in the rhombus, there are two lines of symmetry. 
First we created the rhombus using the right angled scalene triangle like this. We marked the rhombus and identified its properties. A rhombus is a special quadrilateral width, all four sides equal and two pairs of opposite angles equal, two lines of symmetry. We saw that the diagonals bisect each other, the diagonals bisect at 90 degrees, the diagonals bisect the angles of the rhombus. Here's a last question to keep you on your toes. Do you think that a rhombus is a regular polygon? Remember, a regular polygon must have all angles equal and all the sides equal. So no, because the angles are not all equal. Show the properties of a rhombus on a label diagram. Then make your own summary of these properties. Remember to include everything you know about the sides, the diagonals, the angles and the lines of symmetry. So until then, Salah Khobotzi.